in this next lesson, we're going to really take things a step farther because we've talked about the fact that every equation can be written in the form of a translation or can be viewed as such. And so it's hard to believe that when you're looking at an equation such as y equals x squared plus 6x, how is it that I can write that in the form of a translation? And of course, that is our goal at the end of this, that we can see them as simple transformations, a simple flip or a simple just uh, turn. And so if we have y equals x squared plus 6x, how can that be? How can we make that into translation? So what we want to be able to do is do something that we call completing the square. And that's our goal for today is that you might learn how to complete the square. And then tomorrow's lesson is now linking the two together. Now putting, okay, completing the square, and how does that take shape as far as equations go? So x squared plus 6x, I want it to be written in the form of something squared. Okay, hence the term completing the square. Now, the way to do this to start anyway is to examine that middle term and recognize that we all are going to have x and x, okay? I'm gonna, that's how you get the x squared, is right here, the x squared. But to get that number in the middle, or rather to figure out what x plus or x minus what number, we take the middle term and we divide it by 2. And so that would tell us that we're going to get x plus 3, something squared. That's what I'm looking for. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that when I multiply x plus 3 squared out, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9, which hopefully you've had plenty of practice in your homework packets as we've been moving along. You'll notice a quick little sprinkling of those. And the intention was to get you so that you're well-versed in that. So you can do that in your head instead of having to constantly multiply those out. And of course, we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, that's not the same. I want it so that it's x squared plus 6x equals something squared. And so I gather that I have x plus 3 squared, but that's not equal to each other right now. So how do I get it so that they're equal? See, because this has a plus 9. And to the left here, x squared plus 6x does not. There's no 9 here. So what I want to do is I want to subtract that extra. So if I was to multiply this out, I'd have x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9. And of course, those would cancel out, giving me the 0, which then leaves me with exactly what I want. Yet it's written in the form of something squared. And just to point this out to you, if this was, in fact, that equation, and you're like, well, how does that look like a transformation? And this is where we're going tomorrow. I would bring this 9 to the other side. And then my hope is that you can easily see, oh, that's the y equals x squared graph, shifting it to the left 3 and down 9. Isn't that amazing? And there's your vertex right in front of you. Okay, so that's where we're headed in the days ahead. So let's try some more of these. So if I have instead x squared plus 6x plus 3, again, we want it as something squared. So we would take that middle term, 6x, divided by 2. And again, it's that x plus 3. As I multiply that x plus 3 squared out, again, it's x squared plus 6x plus 9. But I don't want plus 9. I only want 3 of them. So that means I only need to take away 6. Let's try another one. x squared plus 6x plus 15. So what does that mean? Again, we would have the x plus 3 squared. But again, when it multiplies out, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Oh, but I need 15. So instead of subtracting from that, I'm actually going to add 6 more. And that, of course, would give me x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 6, which gives me the positive 15 that I need there. Let's try another one. What if instead I had x squared plus 6x minus 15? Well, the beginning of that, of course, stays the same. And again, that would be x squared plus 6x would be plus 9. I want it to equal negative 15. And so... How much would I have to? I'd have to take away the 9 and take away 15 more in order to get that piece that I need here. So that would mean I have negative 24. Last little practice here, and that is, of course, a different middle term. This time I have x squared minus 8x plus 5. What do you think would be there in the middle instead? Obviously, we have the x, and we know it's something squared. 
I hope you're thinking to yourself, wait, I just have to divide that by 2. So I get x minus 4 squared. But then we have to quickly multiply that out to make sure that we have everything we need. So I have x squared minus 8x. So far, so good. But I have plus 16, and I only want plus 5. So I'm going to subtract 11. And that would be our final answer to that question. What I would like you to do is I would like for you to come with your own completing the square. And so I would like for you, let's say I have y equals mm, x squared plus 10x minus 2. And I would like for you to complete the square of that equation for tomorrow.